This is Twit. All right, let's get Dale Baskin up on the uh, Super Spectro Viewatron. <laughs> hey, Dale. Hey, Dale. Hey, Leo. Hey, Kevin. It's great to be back. Do you know Kevin Rose, Dale? We've never met before. This is the first time. Well, I'm a big fan of your site, so... Fantastic. Good to yeah. hear. Yeah. You, you have met other members of our team, like Alex Lindsay, because you, you and Alex were talking about that, what was it, $60,000, 360-degree camera Nokia made? Yeah, it was a couple years ago at NAB. I ran into Alex, and, and he was talking a lot about this Nokia camera in the earlier days of 360 photography. Uh, this was a bit of a beast. I think it had something like 30 cameras on it, and it had spatial audio, and it cost something like $60,000, but it was pretty good. <laughs> Nokia stopped selling it, so it mustn't have been much. <laughs> Although I know yeah, Alex bought three. After phones. Alex had three or four, as I remember. You don't, you don't find those at the Best Buy. But there is something Absolutely it did that, that the cameras we're going to talk about won't do, and that you said it, the spatial audio. And uh, it's one thing to take a 360-degree image. Are there any cameras now that will also do 360-degree audio? Uh, there are various ones. In fact, you have the Ricoh Theta there on the counter in front of you. Yeah, um, this is my, one, my first 360-degree camera. That, that, that has more of a surround audio. Yeah. And it turns out that's pretty important with 360 video, at least. So that if you are watching a video with your headset or even on YouTube and you turn around, the sound comes from the proper hmm. direction. This is kind of cool. This 360 was the first I bought. It was the first one under 400 bucks. And the way they did it, they just have two cameras with super fisheye picture lens, right? So this is everything in front, everything in back. And then you use so uh, software, special software from Ricoh to stitch it together. And I loved it because it would stitch your hand out of the picture. Because that's one thing about 360 cameras, you, whatever's at the bottom always looks kind of weird, mm -hmm. right? Kind of. Yes, strange. most of these will create a, a little bit of a bubble around which everything gets stitched out, so right. it looks fairly natural. So this was a first generation. And you say you still like it? Uh, we still like that. There's a newer version. It's called the Theta V, which is higher resolution, better audio. Ah. Uh, it turns out part of the reason this one is so popular is its simplicity. Right. Um, anybody can use it. You don't have to understand how it works. You hold it up. You press the button. You look at your phone. The images appear, and you hit share to go to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever your shareable uh, destination of choice happens to be. So one question I had about these cameras in general that has stopped me from ever buying one is the software or the output of it, is that require proprietary software to then play around in, or is that a standard, is it an open standard? There are different answers to that question. Uh, most manufacturers do have some kind of solution, whether it's a software on the desktop or an app on a smartphone that does all of the stitching for you. Some right. of them just do it in camera. Uh, there are certainly sources, uh, open source software packages that will let you take data from any of these Here's and do your own stitching. Here's but Tokyo. to be honest, yeah. For simplicity, it's just easier to use the manufacturer's yeah. software. Most. My biggest concern is, you know, 10 years from now, we try and view our images, pictures. incompatible. Well, sh you saw, show it again, uh, Anthony. Before you process it, this is what the pictures look like. Actually, on the Theta, it looks even worse. It looks like two spheres hmm. uh, left and right. It's and like VR before you actually go into VR. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, once, very much. Very but, much. Yeah, once you convert it. Uh, and the good news, though, is YouTube and Facebook both support these, generally support these formats. Right? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, sometimes it's browser specific. I know for a while I could not, for the life of me, get any of it to work on Safari on a Macintosh. That seems to have worked itself out a little bit. Um, so if you ever run into these online and it just doesn't work, switch to something like Chrome, and very possibly it'll work for you. Wow, it's cool stuff, though. Look at those photos. I use, I don't know what you think of this one, Dale, the, Geel, the latest Gear 360 from Samsung. Uh, uh, came out last year, I think. Mm -hmm. Is yeah, that okay? I haven't okay? used that one personally, but uh, one of my colleagues has it, really likes it. You know, for the most part, one truism of all of these consumer cameras is they'll all take a reasonably good 360 photo, it's not going to be the level of quality, the level of detail you're accustomed to on, a, uh, say, a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it comes down to the resolution, right? This is with the Gear 360. We were in Japan at a... a so beautiful. This is the most famous uh, of all the Japanese gardens at the Adachi <laughs> Museum. 
Uh, it's consisted, cons consistently won the best, you know, garden prize. And what's neat about it, and you really can only see it in a 360, is they bought this hillside. This is a hillside outside the property that they bought so that nobody would put antennas yeah. or towers. And you see, I, you can hardly see this, but there's a little waterfall oh, it's right beautiful. there. It is a, it, this is something that a regular image does not capture. Mm -hmm. But a 360 does, a very, I think, a pretty good job of giving you a sense of being there. That was with the Gear 360. So is that sure. what the difference is, is in resolution? What is the difference in quality? Well, what you'll get with a more expensive camera is probably, quite literally, more cameras. So most ah. of the sensors used in these things are fairly off the shelf. Individual companies are not making them. So if you have two lenses facing 180 degrees apart from each other, you'll get more resolution if you have four cameras at the corners that are doing more overlap, <laughs> giving you more resolution, which is why the Nokia we talked about was so nice. I don't remember the number of cameras that had, but it was like a oh, ball. A ton of cameras. Them. But that's why it was yeah. also why it was $60,000. That's why it's expensive as well. Yeah, yeah. So what do you like these days? What's the, what are the better cameras these days for people if they want to get into this? Yeah, so these days the thing we're really watching are what we're thinking of as the next generation 360 cameras. Uh, the challenge with the original ones is your, uh, your footage, your photos or your video requires some level of user participation. Um, either you need somebody to put on one of these and, and start turning their head in a circle, which isn't always easy, or somebody has to go onto a page and drag around. And that can be really fun, except sometimes they actually look exactly the opposite direction of where the interesting thing is. Mm. So there's a number of new cameras, and two of the ones I have with me today are from a company called Rilo, which I have on my left, and GoPro, uh, which you've heard of, I'm sure, the GoPro Fusion. These are also 360 cameras, but where they differ is in the software, and the software is what's really making the difference. Um, if you can imagine, I'm still taking a 360 photo or video with this, but instead of requiring my user to search around and find what's interesting, I can go in with a simple app on an iPhone or an Android phone, and I can essentially select an area that would be a 16 by nine high definition video area, and I can tell the camera where to point. Um, and I, I think we've got an example coming up here of a skier. I gave this camera right here to one of my friends when he went skiing, and he wow, literally held it in that. his hand going down the slopes. The camera is not moving here. The person holding it is moving left and right. The skier ahead is moving left and right. And he basically went in afterwards, tapped on that skier and just said, follow this object. Oh, Could wow. you then look around while you're looking at this or are you locked into that? Well, you have different options for how to export. You can still export it in a way where people have that option, yes. Right. Uh, but what this does is it really allows you to get a very professional look, something you can share very easily on social media that looks great. And it just works. It looks fantastic like you were panning around with a camera yeah. as you were skiing. Well, also, the, I got to say, this is a good camera. The resolution looks 4K. I mean, it looks really high quality. Yeah, if you look at it on a 50-inch television screen, you'll be able to tell. But the reality is the vast majority of people are going to look at this on a phone screen, right. maybe a tablet. Right. And so if it's a little below resolution, nobody will notice. The other thing I like about that is you can look at it uh, normally. So, I mean, that's, yes. as Kevin pointed out, that's one of the disadvantages of this is it's kind of a weird format and mm -hmm. it requires some effort on the part of the user. That one, you just uh, look at like a TV, right? Yeah. And so can you uh, then just yes. export it as like a standard movie file at that point? Yes, absolutely. That's you cool. So you pick your path. as a standard movie right. file. In fact, I think uh, we're bringing up a, a video here that may actually show how the selection is done. In this case, uh, just tapping... Oh, that's neat. You just oh, hit wow. follow this. You can say follow this. Oh, so it's not even a very manual process. It's, wow, wow. Right. You, don't have, cool. you don't have to navigate it. You say follow this object, and it just follows the object. How much is this camera? Uh, these are grand. a little more expensive. This is about $4.99 uh, for the Rilo, which is really our favorite right now because it's so simple. Anybody can use it. And then the GoPro is around $6.99. Honestly, it's a little bit better quality, probably more powerful software, uh, but for convenience and ease of use, we love this Rilo. Cool. So the GoPro, a little more expensive, a little better quality, a little better software. Yeah. yeah. That's the GoPro Fusion. The GoPro Fusion, right. And uh, if I turn it sideways, you can see it's actually got the two lenses on either side. Okay. So it's, okay. I, yeah, I'm thinking maybe I should upgrade that Samsung 360 to one of these. Yeah. These look pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, these new cameras are a ton of fun if you haven't played with them. 
uh, the ability to essentially direct where the camera is pointing after the fact and make it look like a professional cameraman is pointing things around on a gimbal is amazing. Look, can I ask you, like, what what do you use this for outside of, like, for me, I think vacations, no-brainer. Yeah, that's the only time like, I ever use action it. Action sports, no-brainer. Yeah, I guess. Like, skiing, snowboarding, things like that. You but use it a lot the first just, day. Yeah. Right. That's, like, that's for instance, problem. Zelda, your baby, you want pictures of your baby, but do you really need 360-degree pictures of your baby? Right. No. Especially when the house is torn apart like yeah, it is. You don't <laughs> want to see back there. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. But it, it can be a very immersive experience. Uh, I know one of the things that we did on our site when the Amazon Sphere is open with, I don't know if everyone's familiar with those, but they're these giant spherical biosphere type buildings in Seattle. One of our photographers actually went in, oh, um, and I think on the bottom of this page you have right here, uh, there's a YouTube video. He actually <sighs> walked through the spheres with the 360 camera on. And it's really an amazing way to experience the spheres. If you can't come to Seattle, if you can't come visit them, you can literally do a walk through. And oh, as the see. camera's going through, you can decide where to look. And you this can see what that good. looks That's like. Cool. Yeah, I, when I was in the Galapagos last year, I brought my, uh, my Samsung 360. And that's a case where somebody may not get there, but they can have an experience of what it's like mm -hmm. to walk through these islands or ride in a Zodiac and look for penguins. In a 360 means you have a little agency as the viewer as to what to look at. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, it's a specialty product. Yeah. But it's it's kind of cool. I like it that you can play it back on YouTube and Facebook now. So yeah. You don't have to yeah, wear one make of those it very easy. visors. Well, then you just upload it and you don't have to worry about maintaining the software. It's, right. it's there to stay. It's there to stay. As long as they're around. As long as YouTube's <laughs> Right, exactly. Yeah, who knows what's going to happen to yeah. Google. And, and Google, <laughs> excuse me, not Google, but uh, GoPro has a very interesting way of allowing you to do it. You don't even have to press that little button you saw to have it follow something. You can play back the video and essentially just follow it with your phone as it's going. Oh, and crazy. And based on where you point it, it will pan. Wow. Oh, man. Another, Which would you get? Gadget. Which would you get? <laughs> You know what? He's gonna I've buy been recommending one. the Rilo to people. Okay. Uh, I think it, it's so compact. In fact, if I take it out of its case here, I can show you. It's tiny. It really is yeah. very tiny. Yeah. Uh, this is just a case with a handle. It's so simple to use that I can hand it to somebody and say, just hold this thing up, press the button. It actually doesn't even matter if they point it in the right place because you can decide later where you want to point it. Yeah, but the, the thing is, like, if you're holding it right in front of you, it's just going to get... Yeah. You, you got to kind of have to go like I, this, though, right? You know you that I'm taking right a, on a helmet. When I'm taking they, a picture with my Samsung, you know I'm taking it because I'm holding it like the Statue right. of Liberty right. over my right. head, and you feel kind of like a dork as you're walking is around. Is there backpacks with, like, a little thing on? Or That's worse! I'm I know, just the saying, the like, great thing is it has, if I can uh, get this thing back down, you probably can't see it very well here, but it's basically got a standard GoPro attachment. Oh, mm. So if you've got something you that you can attach a GoPro helmet. or an action yeah. camera to, you can attach this just yeah. as easily. So skiing, climbing, kayaking, they even have a waterproof case if you want to take it underwater. Um, it really is a great, I mean, it's essentially an action camera or a vacation camera, yeah. um, as you said, but it's a way of capturing those types of events and sharing them in either a more immersive or a more flexible way than you had before. Yeah, cool. I think I might get the Rilo. $4.99? Four ninety nine for the Rilo. It's a fantastic product, but this GoPro is no slouch either, yeah, as yeah. you would imagine. Two hundred bucks more for the GoPro. Yeah, a couple hundred dollars more. Yeah. Well, Dale, always a pleasure. You're you're really a great inspiration to us. You make me spend money every time you're on. <laughs> I guess Not necessarily our goal, but uh, it sounds like you've got gear acquisition yeah, syndrome. I have gas. You uh, have gas. I do, absolutely. And, of course, before I buy anything, I always go to dpreview.com. It's a great it is, site. It is actually my I'll Bible. so many years it's yeah. been my source. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah it's our Bible. Uh, thank you so much. It's great to see you once again, Dale. All right, thank you, guys. Take care.